All right, so we got a pretty good sentence here. Let's see what happens. We got really good players up in the upper ocean. We got Megatron versus Dim, so dark green versus blue. In middle, we have some decent players. You got Swiss versus Cepha. Be an interesting battle for the mass in the middle. It's where about three minutes in, we get a nice battle. Then we got Power Taus versus Steyr. These are also two really good players. Usually, Steyr is the stronger of the two. Of course, in air, we got Tinak and Citheria, both extremely good uh, air players. People scream. Great. So. Let's see, first thing that happens in sentence is the two middle players gotta go for mass. We see Cepha here making two pigeons and a max, and the, then after that, his AC is gonna run to the middle. He's also got an NG. You can zoom in, you can see that NG going forward, as well as some scouts going to the middle. If we look at oh, what's happening, is Swiss, he, Swiss, he's just sending his ACU. All of his early engines are going after this hydro plant to get his power. So a little, a little more aggressive from Cepha. But both players know to send their ACU. Here we have a whole bunch of wrecks, about 16,000 uh, mass, which is equal to about an experimental unit. If we were just look at the map, two big oceans, an island to fight over with, usually the mountain player here, we got dim and dark green, well, should take over that island unless Mega pulls some crazy build to take it much shorter distance an exact same situation here we got power house with this island much closer should it get it before Steyr and a lot of times these beach players don't have an attempt to go after the island and rocks just take it be interesting to see what the strats are in this game so now we see a very early interceptor by Dim He's mostly just scouting for his middle player, so we can see all the players, but these four players cannot see what's happening with these four players, so it's nice to send early scouts. We got two radar units by Swiss, also trying to see what's happening. It's interesting to see that uh, sh sh Cepha didn't uh, really push his early hunters with the radar. They are just really want to protect this early NG. It's a really big advantage to have this early NG getting this mass. And this will be the first shots of the game. It'll be easy win for Cybern. And this nice T1 interceptor. It's a pretty big investment early on to send an interceptor to the middle, but it usually the recon that it gets pays off. So now we see first action of the game. We got Megatron with a very early transport. And it looks like he's not going after the island. He's flying somewhere in the vicinity of Steyr's base. And we also have a gunship from Paratus. So both players really uh, play extremely aggressive. This is very rare to see. Looks like they're both going to go directly to Cepha's base, which is, if they're successful, this is going to be, an, looks like an NG drop. Yeah, definitely we see some NGs there. Oh, it looks like the other team just saw them. Interesting how they did. Um, but they did. And now we see Power Tower's gunship just decimating these NGs. If you can't don't have NGs, you can make your base. If you don't have a base, you can't make an army, you're going to lose. So that was successful. Three kills for the gunship. A nice drop. He's going to start building uh, guns really quick, which is going to kill. And we see now a T1 Arty just fired off a shot at these NGs, killed four out of six. So a really nice shot. But this gunship really, this interceptor needs to do something. But we see a whole bunch of T1 air from the back player as well as. Uh, power towers so both players sending a lot of T1 air this is only four minutes into the game so quite a bit of action so this uh, T1 uh, PD has been finished and it's just gonna kill these first factories and another drop from power towers so this is basically extremely as aggressive as you can be early on they have total air control they got gunships with nine kills killing NGs and they got their own NGs basically destroying any beginnings of a base that Cepha had it's also very interesting to see that these two islands, usually at about four minutes, they're taken by the rock players. But since both of them are, well, Dim is kind of probably figuring out what the heck to do. But uh, Power Tiles just ignored his island and went after Cepha. So extremely aggressive. 
but you see for this PD has six kills now it's mostly factories so if you can kill these factories and there's no more NG's left there's a couple NG's back here you can't really produce then the other player can just take over this is gonna have a consequence of course in the middle now we see Swiss Cal coming in with his force and he's got his ACU well Sefa really doesn't have much of a force really only five units and more drops both from Mega and the Power Towers. I mean they have total control of air they might as well keep dropping they will take over this area this is some really nice gameplay and you can see basically Supreme Commander is an RTS where you get to look at uh, little dots from far away but if you zoom in you can get to see actual action so we got both air and ground at this point surely we'll probably see navy soon it's a little more expensive but very effective later on and I see more NG's and that's basically the end of Cephas base he's coming back with his commander commander could prevent things like this but really for the middle player they have to be up and uh, getting mass which is exactly what he does but uh, his team did not support now I can see sit there trying to make some T1 air but now that you've lost it it's really hard to gain it back really unit advantage here and Mega is now creating his own factories on top of Cephas old factories as well as Paratas so a really big plan a very ambitious plan as Cephas is ECU's probably going to uh, try to intervene but it'll be very difficult with all these guns already built and uh, absolutely no recon and no support so this guy is now sending his T1 already towards Steyr which may or may not be useful depending on where he sends him. Steyr really likes to go T2 with his ACU which he already has he's probably gonna make some T2 PD here which will take care of all these units you see Dim making some T1 units are coming into the middle but it is a little too late at this point. Of course, we have to take a look at the scores here in Sith and Styre. So these two players have top scores, so they have by far the best economy because they didn't build all this T1 air and all these drops. They were just upgrading their bases. It's interesting if they can push back. I mean, Sith should very soon have T3 air and take over all this air here. If you have air advantage, it's really huge in this game. And Steyr should probably be able to make uh, a nice navy, and a navy has long range, should be able to clear, clean this up place pretty well. So here we have a T2PD from UF, really going to kill all these units pretty easily. Of course, these engines are most likely going to die. That's quite a bit of mass invested in this force. You might not be able to do too much. And now, see, finally at minute 9, Power Taos takes over his island. That is quite late. And Dim... It, I'm not sure maybe he's shell shocked or is confused he is not taking over that island and Mega really should have just done this a long time ago but Mega most likely thinks this island is taken so five uh, mass spots quite a bit of economy here we see Sefa running away he's got 38 kills with his ACU we got Swiss still coming in we got three different colors of armies and now we see Sith not too much faith faith in his mid her middle player, so she just built a whole bunch of walls, trying to prevent this attack, which is going to be very effective. If you can slow down this attack, build up, get some T2 army, take over her air, and just kill all this stuff here, but that may or may not happen. We see Sefa basically all he has is his first unit, his ACU, a little bit of units that are going to die soon. He's just going to go into battle and most likely blow up. Oh, finally, minute 10, Dim takes over his island. Here we see this wall, the double wall, getting killed by T1 units. And Steyr, expecting all these units coming through, are going to make some guns on the ground. It's going to be a pretty big massacre for Purple. Some more kills for Swiss Cow. Really waiting some T2. Or some air here to at least give a pushback a little bit otherwise it's a really one-way traffic at this point Steyr is known to basically sit around uh, and upgrade for 20 minutes but after that he's a very good player at this point he's not really doing much he's planning on making a navy upgrade into T2 if he gets a T2 navy it's gonna be very effective 
but we see all these units just rushing through of course now we got first T2 ground unit from Sith Seraphim uh, T2 unit is just gonna decimate all these units it's gonna be very good we see this T1 PD getting lots of kills Swiss guy with his ACU might think about comb bombing here it's not a very nice thing to do but you can go here and explode to cripple a uh, star pretty well and now we see all these units just pouring through and still uh, T1 air domination from Tinoc. It's really quite late for T1 air to be doing this. Uh, we see a, a snipe attempt from Tinoc. T2 bombers going after Styr's ACU. Dim has been surprisingly very quiet. He's making some T1 bombers but not much else. He is making a navy, making a destroyer at this point. He's taking this island. And no, absolutely no navy from the top team. T2 bombers, T1 air, and T1 units. So they're making mass massive amounts of units and looks like Sefa is fighting off. He's got 77 kills in his ACU. Doing some nice dancing. See the T1 bombers coming in. Doing some bombing. See they didn't do much on that one. See some bombing here. See factories. So a whole bunch of stuff going on. We see that nuclear explosion from Sefa's ACU finally dying. Really, his team abandoned him on this one. But now we got some T2 units, more powerful units. They might be able to push back. See 20 kills on the single unit here. It's going to be a really nice force. We got T3 air from Sith. This might be the beginning of a nice comeback because they really do have much more advanced. It's nice to see two strats clashing against each other. Really early, weak units, a whole bunch coming in, getting a single kill, but now should be a nice recovery from all these much more powerful units. You see T2 gunships supported by uh, ASF. So T3 air. You gotta take control of air and start pushing back with the T2 force, the navies. You see this cruiser here. It's got already 22 kills. It's gonna get more. It's got nice range. Uh, Tinox finally beginning to make a T3 air. Doesn't have nearly as much as uh, Sith at this point. Of course Sith also has to worry about uh, all these things. Has to, she has to control her T2 army and win things back. Of course there should be a lot of uh, mass to, uh, to reclaim in the ground so there's a lot of economy to be gained. Swiss cow is basically gonna go under the shield and hopefully doesn't die. Should be a good strat to build some uh, cruise missiles from here and just snipe all these economies because this cruise missiles can really hit this distance basically all these bases are at the mercies of cruise missiles it's easy to 